What up, fam? Welcome to the Living For You, the YouTube channel. It is your favorite cousin, your favorite uncle, your favorite nephew, your favorite father, your favorite son, your best friend's best friend. It's me, Dr. Larry. And once again, welcome to the Living For You, the YouTube channel. Um, this is a safe space, a positive place, a place where we come together weekly and we enjoy each other's company and just fellowship and set the intention for a positive experience. There are very few places that you can go in media, on television, on the internet, that is just purely about positivity, self-development, and growth. So continue to come. Those of you who are my loyal, faithful followers, my family, I love you all. So thank you for continuing to follow me, to share my videos, to like my videos, and please continue to like the videos. Um, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Those of you who are new to the channel, why haven't you subscribed yet? I know some of you come and you just observe weekly. Go ahead and subscribe so that you know when the videos come out, so that you know what's going on with the channel, with the business, with the coaching and all that stuff. And like the videos, share the videos. This content is shareable. <laughs> this content is shareable across multiple platforms and has been shared across multiple platforms because it's positive. It's uplifting, it's upbuilding. So I want you guys to come and join the family. Go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and share the videos. If you want to know more about me, Dr. Larry Smith, um, you can go to www.liveforyoucoaching.com. That is my life coaching business. It's www.liveforyoucoaching.com. We're expanding and things are growing. So there's a lot of new stuff that's unfolding um, even as we speak. So <laughs> go ahead out there once again to www.liveforyoucoaching.com. And if you want to follow me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Dr. Larry Smith. And you can get all of the latest, greatest things that are going on about me or what's happening in life. Because my, my uh, Dr. Larry Smith is actually my personal. So you actually get my personal life going on. And of course, last week was an interesting week. Um, I took a week off because I had so much to do, but I also had a, a lot of personal things that I'll do a video about that um, shortly should come out this week as well, so that you know about my personal journey from last week. But the big news is the book. <laughs> There's a book. The book, The Freedom Prescription, um, Medicine for Reclaiming Your Present Life After Trauma. This is the book we've been talking about, ladies and gentlemen, that I've been working on uh, for the last six months or so, talking about healing. And really, the Freedom Prescription is just a book in which you get things that I've used, a few of the things that I've used, not everything, but a few of the things that I've used to reach my healing, some of the teachings and the spiritual guides that have been really useful to me, you can get in the book. So the Freedom Prescription, it's out on Amazon and wherever other places you can get online through Amazon distribution um, where books are sold. So get your copy. It's $12.99, but it's going to be worth a millions of lives worth um, when you start to do the work. And it's such an interesting book. There are sections in there for you to take notes. If you want to take notes on what you're reading to kind of monitor and to gauge your own personal development and healing and realize what you need to work on. And it's just one step, but it is a very powerful step. I put a lot of my feelings, you get my personality through it, similarly to what you get here. And you also get, like I said, some, you get six very powerful spiritual guides that I have um, used in my own life to help motivate me through whatever I have to do. So go out to Amazon and get your copy of the book. You can get a physical copy and I'm working on getting the Kindle version. So if you want to get in and read it through Kindle, you'll be able to do that as well. Um, so uh, and we, we may even do a video. I'm considering and I'm planning it on doing a, a video series in which we go through each chapter together um, and we kind of begin to dive into doing the work to heal our trauma. It's such an important work. And you know, you guys know I have coaching programs and such. Some of them are mentioned in the book. So like I said, get the book. Anyway, um, so I wanted to get on and get my notes. <laughs> wanted to get on today and I wanted to talk about actually last week's Ayala Fix My Life, season eight, her final season, episode two. Um, and it was a relationship episode. It was an episode 
um, which we had a married couple on the episode, Deandra, De Deandra, Deandra, <laughs> and Idris, who seemed like a lovely couple, believe it or not. I actually just kind of gauged their aura from my own personal feelings about, you know, people's connection. And you can tell the love is there. But they've reached a roadblock. And it's kind of interesting because I, I recall that they said they had been married for like four years. And I'm like, this is pretty early in the relationship to be, re in the marriage, to be reaching a roadblock. But what happens is if two people come into the union without an understanding of themselves and without full awareness of where they need to be, the relationship is doomed at the beginning, believe it or not. So time doesn't solve problems. <laughs> time exacerbates problems in many ways, especially when it comes to relationships, marriages, partnerships, and all those types of things. And so Ayala opens the episode by talking about unasked questions. Unasked questions will ruin a marriage. She basically says it will lead to bitterness, resentment, and anger if there are things in a marriage that go unspoken. Um, and then, of course, there are us other questions that come up while you're in the marriage. Like, who am I in the marriage and who am I leaving behind from who I was prior to being, marriage, being married to continue this marriage to go on? And so two people growing apart and growing away is what she claims is happening in this episode with Deandra and Idris. And you can clearly see it. Um, both of them are led initially into the, to the, the house in blindfold and they're faced in front of doors. And they're having to make the decision, a choice on where they are and what brought them to Ayala to help her, to get her to help them fix their lives. And so she allows him to choose a door. And Idris goes first, the husband. Um, he's a 40-something. He's 47 years old. They're both fairly younger. It's a younger couple. So like I said, there is a, you know, they're, they're still in the age where they're still cultivating themselves clearly, especially when you go through trauma. That's why it's so important that when you go through a trauma, you actually do the work to deal with it because trauma also has a way of de delaying your development as a sound adult. And so you make decisions still from the place sometimes of that traumatic situation that you've been through, especially if it's a childhood trauma. You make decisions from that child who was traumatized. But anyway, Idris' choice of door is, I made my bed, so I have to lie in it. I made life tough. I made the choice, so I have to lie in, lie in it. And so she gives him lemons. You know, here's your lemons. What are you going to do with these lemons? She gives him his lemons. Deandra uh, her door is, if only you knew, kind of like, <laughs> there's so much I can say, but there's so much I won't say. Because, you know, of course, Ayala, Miss Ayala reads the letters and she reads the situation and she even interviews them pre. A lot of the stuff we know that goes on in the background, we don't even see. Uh, the main work, a lot of the stuff, we only see about 45 minutes of a, a long weekend or plus worth of stuff so she interviews them so she pretty is aware of where she what she's getting into before she gets into them. and so Idris says he makes a choice to be in his marriage which wasn't said his bad marriage according to him because you can kind of feel it coming there but he didn't say it um, and he just has to stay he says he has to stay for the kids um, she knew Deandra knew she said she knew because her father was the same way he didn't want to be married to her, her mom but he stayed for the kids. And so she ultimately married her father. And we'll get more into that as we go forward talking about it because you kind of see it. Um, but they don't really talk about things. And one of the things I realized about this couple and I realized about a lot of couples is that communication sometimes is stifled because each other's interpretation of the other person's perception, um, but also a fear of not wanting to hurt the other person and so a lot of times in relationships, and I've been in that situation myself in relationships, communication just don't happen for the sake of peace, for the sake of not arguing, for the sake of not hurting someone, for the fear of being rejected or the fear of not being accepted or whatever the case may be. You get all kinds of things that don't happen. So Ayana says, even though they don't say it, they wear it. And many times it manifests themselves. And, and I correct myself. They were actually married for six years. I just saw in my notes it was six years. But even still, four or six years, two year difference is not that big of a difference when you're talking about a marriage because it's still fairly early on for them to be having this level of issues. 
And so Ayala asked him, what is the love story? What brought you two together? And, and DeAndre expresses and explains that he was funny and he was witty and they met each other at work and he made her laugh and he, she just felt like it was easy to be with him. He, he, she felt protected, she felt loved, she felt like she was with her friend. All of these in the early stages, and you know, early relationship bliss has all this stuff, you know, you're feeling a certain way and whatever. She felt that she, from the first time she met, he was, it was just so effortless, right? And so, uh, but they wind up getting married six months after their very first date, which is pretty fast. They moved in immediately thereafter. And it was almost like they didn't give themselves a chance to really get to know the person who they are at the moment they were married. And they didn't give themselves a chance to get to know the person that they were marrying. So they were learning and they're learning each other as they get married. And it's a very interesting situation because you don't know the person you with well enough. <laughs> and you're learning on the job that makes the job of marriage a lot harder than it has to be. So Idris... Uh, wants to run, but he won't run according to him because of the children. He's there for the children at the beginning. And he he keeps saying that, he keeps expressing that, but he doesn't know whether or not he wants to be in there. And, and, and Mr. Yana says, if you can't choose whether or not you're in or out, you're out. Because a person who truly wants to be here will say, I am in. And so he couldn't do that. And so clearly she was like, yeah, you're out, you're out. And she wanted to work despite the difficulties. He was like, he want out because of the difficulties. And she said, I'm willing to work on the marriage despite the difficulties. And the interesting thing is, she was in, he was out. And he seemed to be, I'm in, I'm out, I'm in, I'm out, I'm in, I'm out. That's what I kept getting, that Idris didn't really have a clear picture of who he wanted to be and where he wanted to go. I got that early on. That he was kind of a flip-flopper in his relationship mindset. Um, but neither of them both can say, both of them can say that neither one of them loved each other, was in love with each other. So what it sounded like from that point is I was like, both of y'all are really out. Y'all just both here. He's for the kids. And we find out later on that she probably was there for financial security. She was there for comfort. She was there because it was familiar. You know, she was in her comfort of it. But Clearly, it seemed to me that at some point, both of them were not there. What I will say about uh, Miss DeAndre is she didn't allow his feelings to bring invoke feelings in her. Um, she was very passive in that way, in that she, she like he would say he wanted out, and she went like, well, I want out too. No, she was consistent in how she felt, and she didn't allow anger, resentment, defensiveness, or anything to kind of block. But I think it wasn't, she wasn't defensive because she knew how to not be. She wasn't defensive because she didn't like confrontation and she just didn't confront him on how she felt. And so um, they both believed that the number one challenge in their relationship was communication. And I agree. See, sometimes we are aware of what we need to work on personally. Sometimes we are aware of what we need to work on in our relationships, where be it a family relationship, be it a relationship, intimate relationship, be it a friendship. We are aware of those things, but the goal, the, the goal and the thought is, are we going to work on those things? So they knew that communication was the problem. And, and in many ways, it wasn't necessarily how they communicated. It was the fact that they didn't communicate realistically, honestly at all. And we see that. So Ayala hopes to help them to get with this communication and put them on the same page. And that's what Idris said that he wanted. Then they went into business together. So, and, and, and Miss Ayala pointed this out very good. You know, you don't have it together as a man. You became a father first. You became a husband. You opened a business all before you even became a man. And here she is a woman, but she's she doesn't have her issues resolved as a child. So she's still trying to decide the woman she wants to be. She's still running around here like a child. And she's become a mother and a wife. And now she's a co-business partner with her husband. And they don't even like the business relationship, especially him. He feels he's not being supported. And he feels he feels that, that she doesn't get what he wants out of business. And she feels that he doesn't listen to her and he's not putting enough into the business the way she would do it. I always say if the marriage at home relationship is broken, there's no way you can go into business together because you're just going to transfer that toxicity from the home life to the business life because that's too close of an intimate relationship to be working with somebody and living with them at the same time. I wouldn't do it personally for my own sanity sometimes. It would have to be a distance between us 
on a base on a you know on a certain level but at the end of the day it's a difficult difficult thing to work and play <laughs> in the same sandbox right so um there's a lot of things she hadn't said to her husband and and, and Ayala made sure that it wasn't about the business she asked a few times are you here to save your marriage or are you here to save your business and both of them agreed that they're here to save their marriage and you you kind of get that that's what it was it's just the just that the business was bleeding into marriage stuff and marriage stuff was bleeding into the business um so we find out when she sits uh deandre by herself that she just doesn't express how she feels to her husband um she it's hard for her to tell him things. She doesn't say what she wants to say to him. She kind of treats him like her father in many ways. And sometimes she mothers him. They're all confused about what role they play and who they are in their marriage. Sometimes she mothers him. Sometimes she sees him as a father who disappoints her. Sometimes he sees her as a mother who nags him and do these things. But then sometimes he sees her as a daughter and she doesn't know what she's doing. It's just a lot of how they see each other. And so Ayala asked her, do you want to be married to this man? He, uh, because they've had situations before. Mr. Idris has brought up a divorce and Ms. DeAndre said he backed out. He's like I said, remember I say he's in, he's out. He's in, he's out. Because he probably perceives that there's something different on the outside, but he doesn't want to leave the comfort of what he has. In many ways, probably where she is at this moment too during the filming of this episode. One of the things I also noticed that was a sidebar that didn't get any relevance or any pull out during the episode was Mr. Idris's self-esteem. Um, I saw that he had a level of low self-esteem that then he would say little things that were passed on in the episode, but I noticed that there was some, some like he, he even said earlier, he didn't feel like she wanted him. And there, there, there there's definitely a little sense of not being wanted. Miss Yana noticed the abandonment issues. But there's also abandonment, but also not being wanted. And uh, so he, she asked Miss DeAndre, what did you know about his relationship building skills before she married him? And she didn't know anything. He had promised her, he had grown, he had learned from his mistakes. He was learned to be a better father, learned to be a better husband from his previous marriage. But he didn't know anything about how to choose a woman and to cultivate a relationship. And Miss Ayala asked him that. And he said, no, he said, I never learned. You know, my father wasn't around. My mother had abandoned me with my grandmother for six years after my dad moved me to my grandmother's house. And so he had a lot of things. So he did it backwards. He had kids before he was a man. He got married before he was a man. Um, and he didn't have any values any principles he had no foundation she asked him a question um after he kept blaming pretty much everything and his wife said he does that she said you don't have any accountability you don't have any voice you don't have any ownership of anything she said if you run your business like you run your marriage then i see why you're here or if you run your marriage like you run your business then i see why you're here um, because they don't tend to say what they mean. They don't tend to say what they feel. They say what they want each other to hear as opposed to being transparent in their relationship. So they do not communicate. And so uh, Yana says, y'all have to learn how to communicate openly and honestly and truthfully to one another so that y'all can deal with problems because it's now it's just resentment. Now it's just hurt. Now it's just pain. Now it's just anger. And y'all not expressing this. Y'all got y'all roles screwed up. That's what she's like. And like I said, that is clearly, obviously. He doesn't respect himself. She doesn't respect himself. She has low respect for him because he's disappointed her. And he has low respect for her because he feels a certain way about her. So there's a lot of undeveloped things. And y'all say that an undeveloped man becomes a father and a husband and opens up a business, do you think it's going to function right? Nothing's going to function right. Nothing's going to function right. And she even asked Miss DeAndre, is he your daddy? Is he your brother? Is he your father? Is he your man? Is he your husband? What is he? And, and you know, because you don't understand what, you know, you're not in your womanhood to understand what role he needs to play to you in this relationship. 
And so it's a very interesting thing. You know, it's like, like I said, you have a, a relationship where these two people don't communicate. And when they do communicate, it's contentious because they're unaware of how to effectively communicate. And so Miss Inyala helps them. Like, like she mentions, uh, Miss DeAndre mentions that the kids don't respect her as their, or he doesn't respect her as the kid's stepmother and the kids are just as lazy as he is. And I found it interesting that they had a moment to argue to express how they felt. She felt he was lazy. He felt that he wasn't lazy. He just works and he felt that she wants him to do things around the house when he, he's tired. And she says, there's things when you're off that you can do and they're going back and forth about the business and he hadn't filed his taxes in six years and, and she he felt like she shouldn't do it. Somebody else should do it. And they had their moment to do it and to discuss the, 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 the situation of their marriage and stuff. So you get a chance to see that you know, the floodgates open because they don't talk to one another on any real mutual level. And then Ayala dismisses her for a second to kind of get a gauge of where his foundation was. And she asks him, who holds you accountable as a man? Because every man has to have someone who keeps them in check, who keeps them accountable. Who who do you have? Do you have a, a spiritual guy? Do you have a, 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 a pastor or a friend or someone who holds you accountable as a man? And then she said, well, what is your religious beliefs? What is your spirituality like? And he says he was Muslim. Are you practicing? No. And so she realized he wasn't founding, grounding himself in anything that can give him the fortification and the foundation to be the man that he needs to be for his wife and for his family. And I, you guys know, I'm a very spiritually minded person. I believe that spiritual life is super, super important. And so, because I believe that there is something higher than us. You can say heaven, wherever. It doesn't matter what the religion is, as Miss Yana puts it. It's just about being able to have a spiritual foundation and how you walk and how you talk and how you act and what gauges your actions. You can't have a conscience if you don't have a spiritual foundation. And I'm not simply talking about praying and going to church. I'm not simply talking about acknowledging the existence of God. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying, what motivates your decision-making process? What motivates how you carry yourself as a man? There are certain things I just wouldn't do because of my spiritual foundation, not because I think it's sinful, not because I don't want religious with the religious mind behind it. It's just that on a spiritual, cosmic, karmic level, there are things that are just not within something I would do from a spiritual perspective. So you need that, especially in a marriage, especially as a father, because how can you impart life into someone else when life isn't being imparted into you and so uh the episode kind of runs really good towards the end because miss deandre get a makeover because she did come in a little busted <laughs> and ayala kind of said that in her own way got her a makeover and said you have to be in your grown womanness you have to make him want you you have to be provocative and and, and, and what's the word uh sexy and all these things to make him want you and so she gets to make over and he and she makes him write a prayer for his wife. And I thought it was so adorable that when he said his prayer that he wrote for his wife, he cried and, and, and he weeps. And Ayala knows she's like, oh, that's sexy. You know, you know how she does. But for me, it was like, that's the evidence that he loves this woman. That's the evidence that he's more in than he's out. He just wants the end to be good in, right? And so, because he loves her. When, when she came in after her makeover and the look he gave her, like, you're beautiful. Like, he was just, he feels like he's not enough for her. You can t you can see it. It was so cute. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, so they want to be there. They just reached that block. And Ayana said it perfectly towards the end. Just because you have issues in your marriage doesn't mean the marriage has to end. It just means that the plan and the goals and the direction that you're going in has to go into a different direction. You have to move and be bendable, even in marriage. Nothing stays the same. No one's personality stays the same. No one's mind stays the same. What the hell makes you think a marriage is going to stay the same with two people who are growing in themselves? And, and so, so you know, so they're working on it according to the end credits. They're working on their marriages. But I thought it was such an interesting relationship experiment. And, and, and for us to be able to look at this from this perspective. Because I do believe that one of the killers of relationships is um, non-direct, non non-clear, non-articulate, non-open and honest communication. 
Ayala said it very good. She said, relationships don't end from outside forces. They end from the inside out. And communication, if you're not expressing how you feel, whether the other person is going to like it or not, you have to ex give them the benefit of the doubt to know. It's just a respectful thing. You show respect, uh, you show respect and you show honor to the person that you're with by telling them the truth about how you feel and not expecting them to know how you feel without you telling them how you feel. That is super, super important. And, 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 you know, and it can be done in a way I, I know myself personally, my own personal walk is that I have to learn how to communicate. Yes. I communicate direct. Yes. I communicate articulately, but sometimes it doesn't come out where it is received because it doesn't come out always the best. Yes. Dr. Larry has a smart mouth sometimes. <laughs> Can you tell? So, so yes, yes. But but that's my walk. That's my path. That's my growth. That's my room for improvement, right? And, and so, you know, but I do believe in effective communication. I do believe in truthful and honest and open communication, even if it hurts. And I'm willing to receive it just as much as I give it. I think that that's an important thing. And so sometimes people get in relationships and they don't do it because of their perceptions of the other person's perceptions or the fear of hurting someone's feeling or the fear of avoiding or, or trying to avoid an argument or any contention. And you can't do that in relationship and the relationships. And Deandra and Idris's relationship is a perfect example of what happens when you don't communicate because there is resentment, there is anger, there are unresolved issues and they just manifest and grow. It doesn't get better, it gets worse. So communicate. That's it, <laughs> 25 minutes I think, you know, or more. We talk, you know, you can go on and on and talk about relationships. And if you want to, you can actually go back and you can go through the um, videos that I have. I have relationship videos. If you want to know more about it, I might link one in just to kind of give you a follow up so that you can get some more of that, that information to kind of better your life and your communications and your style in relationships. And you can also, once again, and I don't want to sound like a commercial, but you can pick up the, the um, freedom prescription because the best work you can do for any relationships, whether it's your family ships, whether it is your intimate relationships, whether it's your friendships, is to work on your own personal trauma and your own personal development and find healing with that. Because if you don't find healing with that, then everything else is fruitful because you're going to act out of that trauma because trauma, traumatic mind, trauma experience is that powerful. So get the book, <laughs> read the book, start working on you if you feel like you need to work on you. And you should do that anyway. Even if you haven't dealt with the trauma, Trauma, there might be things that you need to deal with that you got to work on that you might not even know because you've suppressed them to try to not deal with them. That's it. That's all. That's all I got for y'all right now today. Um, continue to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Continue to follow the channel, like the videos, leave comments. I like to engage in positive, healthy, uplifting discussions. That's what we do here. Um, and follow me on social media and engage that way. And if you're looking for any um, things that you might need to help you, some tools, www.live for you coaching. I have things out there. You can even schedule a coaching session with me and we can work on those things together. That is what I'm here for. So as I always say in every video, I love you. I love you, love you, love you. And I will see you in the next video.